Hey everybody, welcome back to Advanced Kayak Angler. Uh, I'm, I had a terrible weekend, not a lot to say about that. The event that I won last year on the same lake, I sucked it up this weekend. 51 degrees and the fish are back in the creeks. I, I don't, I went main lake and main lake pockets where I thought they would be and they were not. So, but I, with the wind and the weather, I kind of pinned myself to where I couldn't relaunch. So blah, blah, blah. It is what it is. It happens. Um, great lake. I love Logan Martin too. I, I hate having a stinker on a lake that I love, but, uh, ooh, somebody's moving furniture up there. But, uh, this week we're talking about some, I don't know a damn thing about ice fishing. Uh, I'm from Mississippi, live in Alabama. I've been to Maine and some other, you know, Northern States and things like that, but I have never ice fished ever. Not once. Don't know anything about it. So I got two people who do. And we're going to talk about it. Here we go. We got Richard Offner from way, way up north. And we got Brandon Bissell from Michigan. Richard, where, where are you at, man? You're in Canada, right? Windsor, Windsor Ontario, Canada. I'm south of Detroit, Michigan. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I know Windsor, the city right across the water, right? Yeah. yeah. South of Detroit. I, I looked at the, um, I was, we were looking at a vacation to go up there where they have the Canadian train where you can like start. You know, you can go all the way up to what Quebec City. Oh, yeah. City. Okay. I thought you were talking about taking a kayak. Oh no, no, the no, train, the Canadian can, railway. You can go. Um, it, it, uh, you can fly to Montreal and you can take a train or a bus to Quebec City. Yeah, yeah, it goes all the way up. But there's no fishing there. Quebec is very protected over their lakes. Really? If you want to go fishing? Stay in Ontario. That's that's where the fishing is. You can't fish up there? What What, what do you mean well, protective? I'm only going by what some of the Quebec uh, guys have told me. They like they make you pay to get in lakes. It's gotten pretty crazy. Wow. I um, wonder why. I don't know. I have no idea. I, I don't get into politics of it, but yeah. what I'm telling you is you want to fish, you want to fish in Ontario. We've got lots of lakes. Yeah, there you go. Almost as much as Michigan. Almost. Right, Brandon? Almost. And you've got, you got some pretty good fishing over your way too it's yeah. ironic you being in windsor and me being in southeast michigan I, I think we're pretty much on the same parallel so i, I thought you're from northern, northern i used to live in the up um used to live in the up so uh about seven and a half hours north of here but now yeah. i live in southeast michigan about a an hour and change away from lake st Clair. okay well you, you gotta come uh I, I just posted an event in june 30th okay it was it Mitchell's water Bay or top water event on uh, June thirtieth, eight till noon. It's a Friday, and then yeah. we do a get together on Saturday. People want to come fun fish. Not everybody wants to tournament fish, so I try to attract people that like to just go up and fun fish on Lake St. Clair. It's a good time to bass, smallmouth bass are in close. Yeah, and um, I, I provide free free camping. I've got a band coming in Friday night, so it's, it's a good time to get together with other other okay. like. That sounds awesome to me. <laughs> Yeah, we got, we got a hotel just a couple miles down the road, and you can keep your kayaks on our property. We'll take care of it. Are you wow. uh, up by Mitchell's Bay or closer to the South Shore? Closer to the South Shore. So awesome. short at that time of the year is perfect. phenomenal. Yeah, yeah, the first BFL I fished last year. That's yeah. we made a beeline. I was boat number forty three to launch. I was the number two to make it to the South Shore. So yeah, there you but, go. Yeah. Well, so what, I what, I know Daniel what, wants to talk about ice fishing here. I think so. <laughs> well, whatever, 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 whatever reason. Yeah. Whenever you have the event, let me know and I'll, I'll post it. Try try get All some, right. uh, some we'll folks from your way. So it's on uh, Greater Ontario Kayak Anglers. Cool. Yeah, I've, I, I know on the, the old Pal and Finn show, we've had a few Ontario guys from on the show from there. Great fishing up there. Yeah. All right. So, man, I, I guess we're going to start with my biggest question is, how do you know when to go out there? Like, I see this ice, like the Mike McKinstry, the Basquatch guy, the other day, he was walking on some ice, and I was like, that doesn't look safe. Um, you know, he's in Michigan there, too. How do you know when you can go out there? Where to, is, dude, just start with the ice. Like, what ice, when can you go out there? How do you, and how do you make the hole? Okay, so I, Brandon, yeah. Brandon, I didn't know you're in Southeast Michigan, but so I um, <laughs> it's funny. I'll tell the story, but so my stepdaughter, she was dating a guy that is a big time fishing guy, 
And he ran the Lake St. Clair Detroit River Fishing group page on Facebook. 27,000 people, members. And uh, I went on as a moderator to help him out. And, and they broke up last April. Mm. And he left fishing. He was a fishing guy, a well-respected fishing guy. And he left fishing altogether. Put me as the administrator for this site. So I am now the administrator of Lake St. Clair ice fish. Well, we change it to ice fishing in the winter. We change it back to warm water in, in, in the spring and uh, summer, fall. We post on there um, reports on the ice, when to go on, when, when it's safe to walk, when it's safe to go on our machines, ATVs, snow machines. And Lake Simcoe, which is a little bit further north, um, they have the same group pages. So I follow group pages, and it, it it's accurate. Let's put it that way. They give you reports. They tell you how thick the ice is. Um, I prefer to go out with my ATV, and uh, I don't want to – like we went to Simcoe once this year. It's the only ice fishing I did all year. And I'm pushing the cat away here. The cat wants to get I should say, I swear I hear like a baby or a cat <laughs> yeah, or yeah, something. That's a, that's a damn cat. <laughs> Anyways, I got out once. For two days, we went to Lake Simcoe, got an Airbnb. Buddy and I went out there. He, he was on. He took six days, so I couldn't post any pictures. And um, it was a great time, but we, we caught. We, we did good in day one. We didn't do very good in day two. But the guy we Airbnb'd with, he fishes perch every day in the summer. He, he gave us... He gave us each a bag of fish to take home. Nice perch fillets, are like forty forty dollars a pound right now, and and I was wow. happy with that. But that's all my ice fishing this year was. And per perch is great eating, right? Oh my god, yes. And then in, in the uh, warm water, I fish for walleye, and I'll get my walleye in the fall, starting in uh, last week of March, through to um, maybe the end of April, May, and then uh, in the fall also. Why? Why the fall? I like the cold water. I don't know. I got. I got a thing about catching walleye in, in seventy degree, eighty degree water. I yeah. just think. I just think it's it's better better eating in, in the cold water. Okay. Yeah, it's. I'd say definitely. You know, when you got to give the political answer first when it comes to ice safety, and <laughs> that answer is no. Sa no ice is safe ice. Uh, um, true. You know. Typically, rule of thumb. Uh, three and a half inches is suitable for foot traffic. You prefer to go around four, four inches for foot traffic. Um, I've, I've been on less. You'll find the more you do it, there's different types of ice. There's black ice where the lake is just froze. There's white ice where the ice is literally frozen slush and snow that is refroze. And it's typically not as strong as what we refer to as black ice. So um, we take this tool, it's called a, a spud. It's a really large piece of steel with a chiseled end, end on it. And typically, you know, enough time with your spud, you can determine if one good whack, how much ice I chisel through at once. Mm. Um, so early ice, a lot of what it is, is I'll leave my gear in the truck. I wear a floating suit. So my ice specific suit is actually uh it floats uh like a pfd and i'll just go and i'll spud my way out to where i want to fish and then determine if it's safe or not for a full day of fishing and if it is i'll go back grab my gear and then go back out on the ice um, but typically you see around three and a half inches for foot traffic I mean, more or less depending on the ice quality and then you'll see um, around five inches, some smaller ATVs, your three-wheelers, your smaller four-wheelers. And then once you start getting up on, on six, six inches plus, that's when, you know, full-size ATVs. And in the UP, once eight inches was on any body of water, the 1500s were out on the ice. So, um, you know, there's a lot of places in the UP, in Minnesota, to where once you get a foot of ice, you, know, you don't even, you just drive down the ramp with your truck and drive to your fishing spot kick open your driver's side door and drill your hole right there. So that, that that's how it was whenever I was in Maine. Like there was yep. people I just drove out there. Yeah. yeah I'm, Rich I'm, and I'm, I are. I'm sorry. What? I was just saying now where Rich and Rich and I are, it's probably been, it's been a good 10 years since we've had good enough ice to have 
consistent well, truck ice or truck. Well, well, hold on. Um, yeah. So I, I swore ten years ago I'd never ice fish again. I hated it. Um, plus, being involved as a Hobie team member, I worked shows all winter. So when COVID hit in 2020, I um, couldn't cross the border because that's where most of that's where I worked my shows, and um, I took up ice fishing. Learned how to stay warm. Bought an ATV, bought a fish trap, a clam fish trap, and um, I, I got to say that it was we had we had cars on the water like the last two years. Other than this year, we, were, we had a six week season, and I enjoyed it. This year sucked. I didn't yeah. get to go fishing in Mitchell's Bay. I, I, I did the last two years. Simcoe was hit or miss. I was still hoping to get back there, but I'm um, I'm actually. Uh, getting my boat ready to go out and the kayak I'm getting the kayak ready because I'm doing the um, Sandy Cooper event and bo- the, the box event in the end of March yeah. so ice fishing's done for me yeah and I do wear a float suit I, I do have a spud usually the first days of Mitchell's Bay I walk out spud fish trap pull it out there and then when I can get out in the, in the ATV that makes it a lot more easier and what, 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 what's a fish trap? Um, well, there, there's. I've got a lot of dumb questions coming your way. I promise. Okay. I gave you a picture. Sending. I gave you a picture one. Yeah, uh, Daniel. Oh, is that okay? The 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 shack. Flip flip over. Uh, mine's a two man. And uh, and then there's people that have the tents. Yeah. But with the fish trap, I can move a little easier than a guy with a tent. That has to set up, and he's set up there for the long haul. Yeah. So, um, and plus, I'm pulling it on a, on uh, with my ATV around, or I can, like again, I can walk out with my. Uh, there yep. we go. I don't know if that's so. Not, so yeah. like a, a a little, like a tent that that's a fish trap. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But that's a flip over. Like I don't have a picture of it all folded Open. up. So you could grab that bottom skirting, you could grab the bottom skirting or where those metal poles are on it and just lift up and flip it over and you're ready to transport to move to your next spot. Oh, okay. It's, it's sitting, it's sitting contained in a roto molded, uh, sled. So it yeah. folds down and then it's a sled to haul all your gear as well. Huh. Okay. That looks like that. Like I can get into that. Like. Right. Yeah. ATV and out there. Yeah, once once you figure out how to stay warm, like yeah, that's it. So so back when I was back in the eighties, I was a referee in hockey, and we had cold arenas, and I got frostbite. So staying warm for me is difficult now. So I figured out how to do it. You get you get boots two sizes too big. You make sure you, that your feet can move around inside your boots. You don't make it too tight. You want to cut circulation off. And then a, a striker float suit. Oh my gosh, they are so warm. I, I I don't I don't need a layer anymore. I just put a float suit on and and uh, I can go out and we get in the tent and you put a buddy heater in there and you take your jacket off and yeah put a, put a camera down the hole. I use a camera. My buddy he uses he uses a a, a flasher. Yeah. Um. Yeah. You can see my camera going down the hole. I now have a tripod that goes over. I can kind of rotate around. It makes it a little easier. There's the buddy heater in the corner. Yeah. Minnows. Minnows there too. Yeah. So yeah. so you're fishing with live bait most of the time? No. <laughs> live bait is when they're not biting. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. yeah I'm, if you're fishing Simcoe or St. Clair a lot, you're fishing a lot of bead spoons. Yeah. Um, we're using, uh, um, what are they called? McGaffey's. Yeah. Um, what's the other one called? Anyway, spoons. Spoons with beads on them. Yep. They're literally, they're literally like a little, think of like a spinner bait, a willow leaf blade that's got a slight bend to it. And then on the actual hook shank itself has got either a red or a yellow bead. And then you just fish it plain and it's, it kills for perch. You mentioned Simcoe a couple of times. Uh, when I was in high school, we used to uh, cross the border and go over and stay on Georgina Island. Oh yeah, we don't. We get a house on Georgina Island, and it's yeah, just... that's that's where I went. That's like I went. I fished Simcoe the first time last year. Mm-hmm. We fished Georgina Island. Yep, uh, it's Virginia, just we best perch fishing ever. Virginia Beach. Yep, yep. yep. I watched it, uh, an iPhone 12 Pro drop in the hole, and uh, can't tell you what I, what a weekend that was. I had to drive to Newmarket to get a new phone. Yeah. And, oh yeah, I could see it in the bottom, twenty feet down. 
but nothing I can do about it. I, and, you know how helpless we are without a phone? Oh, yeah. Good thing Imagine I if I did it. I'd be in a foreign country without a phone. Well, well, I had OnStar in my truck. I got my truck, and I called OnStar, and I said, where is the nearest place I can buy an iPhone? And they told me exactly where. They gave me the navigation on my truck. Um, that was that was worth the, uh, the OnStar um, <laughs> subscription I have. <laughs> so here, here's another dumb question. Whenever you put the holes in the ice, like you had two of them there, it doesn't, like having multiple holes... Doesn't destabilize the ice? Like, I think oh, yeah. if you have one, like, okay, I don't want any more. One is enough holes. I, I don't want to mess this up. Yeah. No. I thought, no, I, thought, no. I, thought, I thought that way one time, but no. Yeah. I will say, I mean, you, you do have you do have situations out there. So I have, uh, as Richard mentioned earlier, I have a, a tent shack as well. So if I'm going out lake trout fishing or something, I'm going to be over 200 foot of water, and I want to hold in one spot for a good portion of the day. I'll take, I'll take my tent and I'll set it out. I can fit like six people in my tent. So, you know, you have six holes or 12 holes, depending on if you want a hole for separate for your transducer, if you're going to fish multiple rods. Um, I have had it to where, you know, you have so many holes, you know, in a shack and then have a truck drive by and a crack quickly dart between all of your holes. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't make the ice any less safe, but I mean, it sounds like thunder's going off inside your shack yeah. so oh, that's... it'll make the hair stand up on the back of your neck but yeah, you never get used to it up. no you never get used to it it's it literally sounds like thunder but not thunder two miles up in the sky thunder in your face so so do people kind of think like people that ice fish are a little a little crazy going out there i mean that's kind of the vibe i'm getting here <laughs> i don't know i mean i feel like i feel like you have to be you have to have somewhat of a sense of adventure. I mean, because all the work that goes into it. So, I mean, you're, you're packing a lot of gear. I mean, especially if you're going solo, you're, you're hauling a lot of weight with you. You're traveling out onto a frozen lake, typically in temperatures well below freezing. You're spending a good 30 minutes to an hour to get set up. You know, it, it, it's a process. But, I mean, when it comes to winter in the proverbial ice belt, you know, we don't have the opportunity to head down to open water every year. So yeah. our options are option one, ice fish, you know, take advantage of, and still be able to fish during the quote unquote off season or two, sit in your house for three, four months every year and yeah. just watch YouTube videos, you know? So it's, <laughs> it's uh cabin fever. Yeah. I'll, I'll say, you know, like, like Rich, it's been a, it's been a minute since I've even been ice fishing. Um, this year was absolutely terrible. I start pulling my gear out of storage. We'll get a 70 degree day. And it's like, I start thinking about cleaning the boat off and charging the batteries and taking the boat out and then it'll get cold again. Uh, last year I was actually down in, uh, Orlando, Florida for the KBF, the 10 for, I, you know, I was down there for, a good four or five weeks out of our, out of our ice season up here. You know, I fished the tournament and then hung around, did a little ocean fishing, you know, went down to headwaters, checked out some other areas. So I would love to go to headwaters. Oh, it's, it's gorgeous. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that place is, that place is really incredible, but um, it's just, you know, you have to have a sense of adventure. I don't know if I'd say we're crazy. I mean, yeah. yeah. Somebody from the South, we're probably pretty crazy, but. I mean, it's a way of life. You go to you go to North Dakota, Minnesota. Um, if you know those, uh, think of those travel trailers, like camping trailers that are actually car haulers too. So you got you, you know what I'm talking about, like the open space uh, camping trailers. Yeah. So guys have those up in Minnesota and up in North Dakota that are actually what they call ice houses. There's a industry yeah, like ice shanty that that's kind of what I imagine. Like, and whenever I was in Maine, I would see those out on the ice. And then like whenever the ice melted, one of them was like halfway in the water. Like, he yeah, didn't, he didn't pull it off the water in time, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. They make like these 30,000 ice there are these $30,000 ice houses that, you know, you can put a 40 inch screen TV in, sleep out on the ice all weekend yeah, and run right. what they call rattle reels. So you're sleeping in your bunk right here and you got oh, yeah. a rattle reel right here. So while you're sleeping, you know, if, if a walleye or a burbot, you know, decide to bite, it'll a, wake you up and you, a burbot. Yeah, you want you want probably the coolest fish in all of North America. They call them freshwater lobster because their meat's so white and they're so close 
They're so close to lobster. Yeah, it's burbot, B-U-R-B-O-T. Uh, the best way to describe them would be it's a mix between like a dogfish and a catfish. Yeah, that's it. But they live, here's the kicker. So they need exceptionally clean, clear water. So Lake Superior is probably like the largest, obviously it's the largest lake in North America, but it, it's, uh, yeah, I've click on a couple of those. So Ooh, big one. they look like a freshwater cod. Um, you know, that's they look like a dogfish, kind of, a bowfin. Kind of catfishy a little. like Yeah. But get this, they spend a majority of their adult lives out in like 200 to 800 foot of water. Wow. They only come up in the water that's targetable in the winter when they spawn. Wow. So you have a small window to take advantage of them. If you're an avid, if you're an avid burbot fisherman, because I mean, they're, they're such great eating, you have to fish them in the winter. So what's, what's like the best eating? Is that it? A burbot? It's... If you like lobster, but if if you're if you were to ask anyone else as far perch. as like frying, yeah, perch and walleye are, are kings. Perch, perch, walleye second. Yeah, it, it seems odd agree. that it would have it would be like lobster. Yeah, yeah. so um, see, type in like burbot freshwater lobster, and it'll show. I know it's a weird Google search. Yeah, burble burbot freshwater lobster, and uh, let's see if they. So yeah, if you kind of wow, oh, that's fried. Oh, oh, assholes. Uh, or I'm sorry, no, I'm I'm an idiot. It's it. Type in burbot poor man's lobster is what it's referred oh, to. Poor, oh. poor man's lobster, but their meat is like incredibly similar to the texture of lobster. Oh. So yeah, yeah, if you, they'll make burbot rolls. Yeah, ooh, I love a lobster roll now. Yeah, it's. It's it's a lot of people will just boil will boil chunks of meat and dip it in butter like that for uh okay I can know. get down with that some burbot tacos yeah so that they're good yeah bro but they're they're like I said they're pretty rare I mean I think Simcoe has a small population of them uh, when I was living on the South Shore of Lake Superior we'd fish them every Saturday night and you have like a window so like the sun goes down and you wait like an hour hour and a half. So from like 9.30, 9.30 at night to like 2 in the morning, like 2 a.m. was the best time to fish for them. And it's, uh, it's just, it, that's something you, you would never be able to do if you didn't live in the ice belt and if you didn't ice fish. So it's. What? Why at night? Because they're just, they're just a nocturnal species. Oh, okay. um, so it's like you, we would fish you know, when we were in college and we had the energy to do it, we'd fish all day. Like we'd get on the ice before sunrise, catch a bunch of splake, which is a, a burbot or a burbot, uh, uh, brook trout, lake trout hybrid. And we catch salmon through the ice. And then we just wait till the sun went down. And then all of a sudden when the same holes were catching the trout and salmon, we'd start catching burbot after the sun went down. So I think they just spend as much time out deep as, as they can. And then on those, those, uh, those late nights they come up spawn quick up in the shallows and then just go back out mm. no it's and you know ice fishing has its practical tools it's not just a time waster in in the winter um you know so let, i'll use this for example now that i'm living in southeast michigan i don't have all those cool experiences of being able to fish for burbot being able to fish for salmon but uh michigan um uh, i don't know about 10 years ago we had a uh, restricted season on bass fishing. So like the, you could only fish, you could only target bass the last Saturday in April through uh, December 31st. Now we have catch and release all year round. So we can target bass through the ice. And now with tools like live scope and them having live scope ice bundles, we can get out on some of our tournament lakes preseason and see, okay, where are the green weeds at? Where's most of the bait at right now? The, the what? The green weeds? Green weeds. So when you know when you get a good ice cap on top of some of these lakes, you'll have entire weed beds just die off. But for whatever reason, there will be weed beds that will survive the winter. And mm -hmm. those weed beds that have that constant oxygen rejuvenation going on will attract the bait fish and therefore attract the predators. So, so you know where to start in the spring whenever it, it dies out. Exactly. I mean, if you're catching a bunch of bass during ice fishing season, once that ice leaves, those fish don't just move. 
I mean, you can take your kayak out. You can go right back to the same area. Um, you Metro Beach? Yeah, Metro Beach is a good, Metro Beach is gross, a good one. Gross Point? Yeah, Gross you Well, if you were ever to get on the ice at Gross Point, you'd be one of the first people to do it. Oh, yeah. Get, that's, the, get the Detroit River Turn still. Yeah, that's, that's so, one. Was it sketchy there? Yeah, so St. Clair's, St. Clair's a really, really cool biome. And I, I don't want to sound like nerdy or anything, but, you know, it, it's it's sandwiched between two of the largest river systems in the Midwest. You have St. Clair River to the north, which has the St. Clair River Delta, which is just incredible if you ever look at it on a map. And it's pulling water. The Detroit River at the south end of Lake St. Clair is pulling water. So St. Clair has natural current all of the time. So the further south you get on the lake or the very far north, you know, it never, you know, it the freighter, very rarely does it freeze. The freighter channel. Yeah, right, right. But there's so much current that comes through that lake that, uh, you know, you got to be careful where you go out there. Now, um, over in Mitchell's Bay on the Canadian side, uh, a lot of Anchor Bay, you know, you can, you can get out, spread your legs and yep. fish a lot of that. So a lot of these lakes, it may not be like the whole thing's frozen. It's just <laughs> a portion of it. Yeah. If I had, if I had opportunity to show, um, to show a video, uh, two years ago, I was up on Lake Superior and, uh, we we're fishing one of the main bays on South Shore Lake Superior. And there was a line, uh, like there was two miles of ice and then everything else out of that was open water. And uh, that day we had waves come in. So the, so the ice, if you were to lay down and look out on the ice, you could actually see the waves under the ice. You'd see the ice rise and ride with the waves. Um, that broke up some of the far out ice. And then the wind shifted to come out the south and started blowing a lot of that ice out. So the two miles of ice by the end of the day became one mile of fishable ice. So it's, those are all things that you have to keep in mind when you're out there. You know, you have to basically as you're fishing look down the hole make sure your line's not moving because if your line's going outside the hole <laughs> you're moving so it's uh not wait wait wait, wait. What, what, what do you mean oh you've not you've not heard of like on sturgeon bay last year when those those 50 60 people got trapped on that ice sheet that broke away from the rest no yeah. no we don't hear that we don't get this news yeah so that's like kind of a regular occurrence up here uh sturgeon bay is uh well, it's not only one of the best smallmouth bass fisheries in the world, but it's, uh, Sturgeon Bay, which is a part of the Greater Green Bay on Lake Michigan, um, has phenomenal whitefish fishing. It's like one of the top ice fishing destinations in the Midwest. Well, last year, a bunch of people went out on the ice uh, way out. The ice broke up, wind shifted directions, and everybody got stranded out on the ice. So they had to send Coast Guard helicopters to go pick everybody up because there was no place to cross back. Everything was open water all around them. So they had to leave their fish houses, their four wheelers, all their equipment on the ice, wait for it to blow back in one direction or another, refreeze, and then they could go back out and grab their gear. So that's, wow. that's a great lakes phenomena. So like my local lake by my house, I don't have to worry about that. Everything freezes so, solid. What, what do you call a local lake by your house now? Uh, so Irish Hills area. Yeah. Uh, like, yeah, Jack, Jackson. And then I'll consider everything like, like, uh, Orion and all those in the greater Detroit yeah. area. But all safe ice fishing, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. And, the, and you know, there's a lot of pan, you know, there's a lot of good pan fishing in, in the lakes around me, you know, yeah. panfish being bluegills, crappie and perch in Michigan. So, but All that's right. also the, the wind down for me, you know, it's nice. So after my bass tournaments are over in the summer, I usually get a good couple months of real hard deer hunting. You know, I travel out West to do a bunch of deer hunting this year. And then after the deer hunting winds down, I'll try to get on the ice and secure me some, some fillets because, you know, catch me some fish to eat because when summer's here, spring's here, early fall's here, if I'm on the water, I'm bass fishing. So, so, it, so Brandon, are you a uh, walleye? Um, oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Oh yeah. Yep. There's Power, been. I, power boat or a kayak? I've never taken my kayak on the river. I want to, I, I really want to, but. Um, where, where, where would you launch from? I've launched everywhere. So I used to work across from the Trenton Channel uh, boat launch, but I would launch anywhere on the Detroit on the Detroit River, uh, all the way up to Alter Road to Wyandotte. Alter Road is a good spot. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, I... You, don't you, be blowing out your spots online here. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want everybody to know where you're going, man. Oh, no, 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 no,
when it bitches about telling spots, this yeah. is not, these are community halls. Community yeah. halls are, you can't hide them. No, that's, yeah. you go, you go to Detroit River on in April, you've got 200 boats within eyesight. You got several thousand on the river at once, but the 200 that you can probably fish. talk to. Yeah. You're still really? catching. Everyone. So there's something like 300 million walleye in the western basin of Lake Erie that make the trip up to the Detroit River every year. Lake Erie um, has the biggest spawns. Um, I forget the previous previous uh, big year was, but it was like 2003, I think. Mm -hmm. But the last four years, they've had ridiculous spawns. Sorry, I, I have a hard time speaking with my missing tooth. No, I'm you're good, man. <laughs> and do you back talk your wife or something? No, I am. Uh, Old hockey injury. I was gonna yeah. say, they got to be hockey. Related. Yeah, I mean, you got all the hockey stuff on the walls. I, I yeah, 40, Forty-two years ago, it just keeps repeating on me. Yeah, you're good. Answer anyway. me this, Dan: If you ever were to come up, would you go ice fishing? I'll put you on the ice. Yeah, my my problems. We're actually going up there for vacation this year to uh, like North Dakota, South Dakota, yeah. Eastern oh. Montana, and you know that whole Devil's Tower, Rushmore. Yeah. Theodore Roosevelt, the whole nowhere, near, nowhere near us. No. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, no. My man, my problem is vacation time. Like yeah. with tournaments and a six year old, I just I never have enough vacation time. But eighteen days is just not enough to do everything you want to do. Da you know? Daniel, enjoy your enjoy your son's uh your other kids. No, just one. Enjoy enjoy his time. You can you cannot you'll never relive that. So enjoy his time. Yeah. I, man, I I wish I could. I I would love to go up there. And it's crazy. Whenever I was in Maine, I I just like I went skiing and stuff. I, I just I didn't know anybody. I didn't know but anybody into it to go do it. You know. So right. And like I, and like I said, there's different levels to to the ice fishing too. Yeah. Do you have that picture I sent you? Yeah. Here, let me bring it up. That was pretty deep ice there. You're trying to dig into. Yeah, we had two separate extensions on the auger. I've never had to put an extension on yet. No, that's... 12, 12 inches is the most I've had to dig through. Right. There you go. So, yeah, this is this is my buddy Jake. Um, and you can see we have... So, the actual auger part is the... You can see the red part of the shaft right above the flighting. That's where... It, yeah. That's the flighting? Yeah, that's that's where the auger stops. Everything wow. from that to the power head is actually <laughs> is actually auger extensions. So this is up on Lake of the Woods, which is right on the border of uh, Minnesota in Manitoba, Canada, and uh, it's it's incredible. It, it, it's there's so much ice. Uh, there's ice houses. There's a hundred thousand dollar ice fishing rigs out there. They plow roads. Uh, they they plow roads. Uh, literally, there are ice highways to where if you pay five dollars to I can't think of the, the lodge that actually maintains the roads, you can use their ice roads for the day, and it's uh, it's it's just incredible the amount of fish you catch. Um, and this is a trip that anybody could do. You could be from Miami, Florida, and go up there to one of these all inclusive ice fishing lodges. So, so, so Brandon, I gotta ask you. Yeah. Can you do it in an ATV or you need a snow machine? Um, so if you stuck to the ice roads, you could do it in an ATV. Um, believe it, uh, most of the time, if you go, <laughs> you only have like two weeks of early ice and then the trucks are out. So, um, you know, and they hit, and all these places have different packages. So it's, you can do like semi DIY to where you take your truck out on the ice, follow the ice road, go to the shack. They've got the shack heated up for you. You fish when the time's up, you go, they've got it all inclusive to where they put you in an actual transport machine, take it to your shack, put a guide in there with you to help you catch fish and then drive you back to the lodge at the end of the day. So, um, you know, ice fishing doesn't have to be this super daunting uh, you know, something I want to experience, but I don't have the gear. I don't have the time. I don't have the wherewithal. I don't know anybody. Um, there are all inclusive shacks or all inclusive operations like these uh, all over. Yeah, the ice I, I never even thought about that. That I mean, if if it's something you just want to say, you just I've done a, yeah. yeah bucket list. Yep. Man, I want to go out there ice fishing. So there's places you can go. They'll set you completely up. Oh, absolutely. And uh, and most of them like. Lake of the Woods, where this picture was taken, we did this all DIY. We stayed at uh, 
well, we stayed at a lodge, but you know, we provided our own food. We cooked our own meals, uh, did our own searching and everything. That's why we were actually trying to find a spot to where two auger extensions would get through the ice. That's how much ice was actually up, uh, up there at the time. But, um, most of these are on just world-class destinations to where if you go, you're going to catch fish. Um, I like to be a DIY guy, but I mentioned Sturgeon Bay. Some of the coolest fishing I've ever done is with some of those guides up in Sturgeon Bay. You know, you show up, hop in their ATV, usually a heated side-by-side, and they'll drive you to a shack. And they've got the propane ripping, and you sit there and catch whitefish until your hands hurt. And then, you know, you've got all the flays you need for whitefish tacos for the year. So I guess, I, you know, th there's so many different species that you're targeting. Oh yeah. How do you, like what are, I guess it makes sense if you're like, if you're targeting a specific sp species, you would know about where you want to put your hole, but what if you're trying to catch different things or are you just putting it in? It, it, it just seems in my mind, it's difficult you know, in a boat or a kayak, you're moving. Yeah. How, how, what makes you choose a spot? Like this is the spot. Yeah. So it's, it's, uh, it's, it's the same as anything else. Um, just take away the being able to constantly move and fish. So, um, you know, there's a lot of map study that goes into it and I'll be, I'll be frank with you, Dan, a lot of the places I ice fish are places I do really darn well when I'm bass fishing. Yeah. I find a phenomenal weed bed in one of my local lakes that, Hey man, I'm, I'm catching big large mouth and they're spitting up big bluegills. Well, I'm going to waypoint that on my phone on an avionics app and I'm going to go back and I'm going to drill holes all around that weed bed come winter and see if there's bluegills there. But it's, it's not that much, it's not that much different than if you were in a boat or in a kayak, you know, do a little bit of map study, find your contours. Now you have to know what the species you're targeting is typically doing in the winter. Yeah. Um, you know, that's a big difference between largemouth and smallmouth. You know, your smallmouth will be out in 20 plus foot of water on a specific rock pile, whereas your largemouth will be up shallow in a lot of the same haunts that they'll be in in the summer. So it's, you know, you have to have a little bit of wherewithal to know what the species you're targeting is doing. Um, but aside from that, it's, it's pretty much the same. You're just a little less mobile. But I tell you what, I, you know, this was for Lake of the Woods, that auger the auger I use is a five inch bit. It's a five. So I have the flighting on a adapter connected to a Milwaukee M18 hammer drill. And I can, so I've, I'm using household tools to go out on the ice and I can drill three holes with my M18 uh, faster than, you know, what my buddy Jake here could do with, you know, uh, an actual designated ice auger. And my drill weighs, uh, a fifth of the weight of a auger in a traditional auger. Yeah. So a lot of times if I've got three hours, man, I'll drill, I'll drill 80, 80 to a hundred holes out of the oh, ice. Oh, really? That I'm, many? Oh yeah. Oh, and, okay. And we have, you know, we have equipment. Uh, I wish I had my flasher here, you know, there's traditional dial flashers. Um, but then nowadays, you know, all of the big graph manufacturers like Hummingbird and, uh, um, Lawrence and LiveScope, they have ice specific bundles or ice specific equipment for their forward facing sonar. So um, the sky's the limit with ice fishing now, as far as technology goes. Just so if you see them on forward facing, like 50 yard, you know, however far away, you just go drill over there. Yeah. Yeah. It's an awesome two man team. That's what makes it fun because when you're drilling the hole and you finally pop Bobby the to the left. Yeah, exactly. You can see that <laughs> flighting pop through on the, you can see the flighting and the ice shards, you know, disperse on the forward facing sonar. So that doesn't spook them. No, not typically. I mean, if you're super shallow, maybe, but, um, you know, it, it's, it seems like a lot of your ice fishing, if you're not up shallow sight fishing, you're in deep enough to where, I can pop 80 holes and still catch fish. Or is there like, do people get upset if you put, it seems like you don't want to put too many holes in the ice or do they just fill it? They fill up so quick that it doesn't matter. Well, like I, I would think like, you know, there's a bunch of like, Oh, you know, Brandon over here, you don't <laughs> want to fish by him. He's got a hundred yeah. holes everywhere. It's the, guy, it's the guys with the uh, old fashioned, uh, what do you call those? Uh, the hand augers. 
Uh, no, the gas augers. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Those are annoying. Yeah, the yeah the it's smell of the out. exhaust, the yeah. hearing of the rip sounds like someone's got a chainsaw on the ice next to you. Yeah. Where, where I mean, if you close your eyes, aside from the wind burn on your face, the tingling in your hands, and the fact that you wish you're in the warm, if you heard me on the ice, you just think I was building a deck with my with you know with my drill going off. But I don't know, Rich. How about for you guys? I mean, you don't do you, hear that? Yeah, do you guys the, the have issues? Sauger and the airboats. They're. Uh, they're, yeah. they're look they're look the other way now. Yeah, especially the old jiffies. The old jiffies are I, I the old jiffies gotta be the loudest auger on the market. Yeah. Oh yeah. loud two stroke augers just no, ripping. The airboat the airboats are the worst. Yeah. Guys, what what, what airboat, what's an airboat? airboat? You know what airboats are? No. They, can, they can uh they don't have to worry about breaking through the ice because mm -hmm. they can still go through water. And like like a hovercraft almost. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So they go by and it's like, really? <laughs> yeah, like the airboats that you would see down on Okeechobee or on yeah. the Simi chain. Like those, they'll just purpose them for ice fishing. Yeah. So it's like a little cabin ice. Wow, that, that's even, badass. They, they don't even have a cabin. They just, oh, oh, just okay. cruise them by. And, yeah. And they, res they rescue guys that got caught out in the ice. Yep. Hmm. Do a lot of people do it from a boat just for safety? No, no. Yeah, I'd, I'd say in in Michigan, no. Um, on Superior, you'd always see guys who would uh, drag like super early ice, like less than three inches, drag a, a small kayak or canoe with them, and really? then sit. Yeah, and then sit in the kayak on the ice to wow. disperse their weight to fish. I but, haven't seen those. <laughs> yeah, it's those are typically those are typically the guys that have been doing it forever and. Yeah. You talk about yeah. Mike McKinstry right now? <laughs> What's that? You talk about Mike McKinstry? No, I don't I don't I don't really know Mike all that well. I've met him yeah, a, I've Mike, met him a few Mike times. Mike likes to drag his kayak out there. Does he? He takes his kayak? Um, yeah, sometimes. Yeah, I don't but, know. But no, I, I think recently he's a he's a true kayak angler now. Or oh, sorry, ice fisherman. Yeah. I've got a I've got a AP one thirty six. That's a that's a long heavy that's a long <laughs> yeah, heavy drag to, drag to take drag that out. out of the ice. And they get all banged up on the ice. That that ice can be rough. Yep. Um, what, what what do you mean? So like back when I was fishing, um, <laughs> so back when I was fishing on Superior, the Great Lakes mostly. Uh, a lot of times, what you'll get is uh, your first Bro ice, broken ice. Yeah. So so the ice is actually like pancakes that push together. Yeah. And when like they push together and refreeze. You know, you've got jagged edges sticking up, and the ice is uneven and um, you know, to where just walking on it's a pain, let alone dragging something across it. You know, it, it'll it'll tear your equipment up. But in those early ice and that kind of ice is sketchy because no two pieces of ice fit perfectly together. So you might have a four inch piece of ice and a four inch piece of ice that kind of mush together, but where they're rounded, you're going to have gaps to where there may be four inches of ice here, but two feet away from it, there's two inches of ice. So that's, that's where that's that spud and really checking your, your, your ice as you go out is, uh, is super important. I don't know if you sold me on it or not. <laughs> I mean, some, <laughs> some of it's like, yeah, this is awesome. Some of it's like, Hmm. Yeah, we're know. talking, we're talking early da ice. Da Daniel, follow me. I don't go, I don't go out in early ice. Yeah. Yeah. Now, the last two years I haven't gone out at all. Yeah. It's been tough. But, the last two years, last last two years previous to this one have been pretty good. Yeah, last last year was last year was we had pretty good ice conditions. I know my my father made it out a few times, but as soon as it got ramped up here, I was down. I was down in Florida for the well, KBF the ten and tournaments. That's why. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. but then this year I would get ready and be like, all right, looking, I can be on the ice by Christmas Eve, and then all of a sudden get all the stuff out, and then. That nope. on the extended forecast that day was supposed to be 20 degrees. Well, the day rolls around, it was actually 55 degrees. So yeah. this year was rough. Wednesday is gonna be 60 degrees here. I know. Wow. 60 Fahrenheit. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I say bring it on at this point. I was telling my dad yesterday, I said, just bring on the warm weather. I'm ready. I'm ready to bass fish. Well, for us pike fish, we can't get yeah. we can't bass yet. 
Right. Mm. This time last year, I was punching hyacinths and catching big fish down in Florida. This year, I'm sitting on the couch watching YouTube videos. <laughs> so, it's not right. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I wish I was going down there. I love Harris Chain. I, I wish I was going down there this weekend. I, yeah, for some I'm, reason, I'm not fishing it. I'll be watching it very closely. It's, uh, yeah. I was hoping it was one of them I was going to be able to make, but uh, was, it wasn't in the cards this year, so... Yeah. It's a, it, it's, it's a great, I mean, it's a bunch of lakes, but yeah, they're going to catch them. It's, it's awesome down there for sure. You, you doing any boss events, uh, Brandon? Uh, this, this year. Um, so I've got some pretty big, I'll be careful what I say. Uh, I got, I have some pretty big non fishing related life events that are going to happen. That's actually going to pretty, it's going to limit my participation in, uh, fishing tournaments as a whole this year for a pretty good bit. But, uh, for 2024, I'm going to try to do as many BOS events as I can, because I've been, I've been watching them pretty closely and it's just like, it seems like such a well-run organization. They look like great tournaments. They choose great lakes at the right time. So I'm, it kills me. I'm not going to probably be able to make any of them this year, but, uh, but no, next year. So you said non-fishing events or non yeah, non non fishing related um, events. So yeah, so like I'm not I'm not gonna be able to fish as much this year as I would on a, a normal year. So, but yeah, I'm, for, I can say for every BOS event I've ever fished, they've all been perfectly ran and as smooth as possible. I mean, it's just you know, hit, anything AJ and Steve runs with Bassmaster now, all those are going to be just you yeah. know Cadillac smooth, no problems. Well ran, so yep. yeah, good and good in good hands either way, right? So Brandon, you should come come visit us in uh, our July first weekend. Yeah, um, it's a non fish non fishing tournament tournament event. So it's just people that like to go out and fish on Lake Saint Clair. Yep. No, and it's you're only like three three out or like two two hours two and a half hours from me. So you said Southeast Michigan. Yeah. Where's that? Uh, I, I don't know how you describe I'm like right on the Ohio border. So I'm closer to Erie than I am St. Clair. So. Okay. So you're probably an hour and a half. Yeah. So. But, um, 20, 20 minutes from the border. Okay. Perfect. But, but yeah, it's, are you, are you coming over for the KBF MKT conglomerate tournament that's going to happen? You mean the Lake St. Clair one? Yeah. The one in April. I will wait until the weather. <laughs> yeah. I can do that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Gets I'm nice, yeah. doing Saginaw, the MKT Saginaw event. Yep. Um, we're camping there for the whole week, so awesome. I, uh, I fished in a Saginaw event last year. I loved it, so I'm looking forward to it this year. Yep. No, that's a really good event too. Yep. I'm it's telling cool. you, Dan, we gotta get you up here to do some sort of fishing sometime. Dude, I I want to. Just... Even if summer St. Clair, man. I've so I fished. Yeah. June, July. I'd, I'd love to be up there for the spawn. Yeah, I I fished uh, four four tournaments, a uh, kayak tournaments on Saint Clair, and I've had over a hundred inches in every single one of them. Um, so I set I set the the kayak single day record with one hundred and three, or uh, yeah, one hundred and three and a quarter inches, all smallmouth. Wow. And then, uh, you know, I won those back to back K, uh, KBF events in twenty. Was it 2021 with 102 and 101 inches respectively on back-to-back -back days? So, if uh, if you can find your way to come up here in uh, in uh, May or April, yeah, April's the best. Late April. Late April. Yeah. Huh. On the Canadian side, uh, we don't open our bass season until the fourth Saturday in June. June, yep. And it's wow. Just good. Yep. Hmm. But we're. It, it's double sided. I, I know for Rich it sucks, but you've got all that unpressured water yeah. that after the US has just been beaten up from yep. pretty much ice out through the spawn. They head over that, there. Oh my goodness. It's it's some I I tell most people that Canadian waters on Canadian opener is just as good as the best days you'll have in American get, waters. We don't get much pressure. Not yeah. even not even a power boat. Right. I fish well, when I was up. 
Yeah. Tell me, Rich, how does it happen? Do you like, is the boat scene? Cause you guys have a, you guys have a phenomenal kayak sh- um, scene. Yeah. That, that their club's huge. Yeah. I, we, well, I fished the BFL on opener last year and made the run to the South shore. And there was hundreds of you guys in kayaks. Oh, we had a tournament last week, last year. Okay. 2022, we had a tournament. It was yep. uh, over 100 of us. Oh, yeah. This it was great to see. This year is nobody. And um, my event is the weekend after. And it's just a fun, fun event. Awesome. So we'll do a little uh, top water 8 till noon on Friday, June 30th. And then on July 1st, we'll do just a fun event. We all go out and fish. Yeah. So you won't see the 100 boats you saw last year. But still... There's very, it's funny because there's very few people come over and fish Canadian side. Right. I'm just ready to retire. That way I can go spend a few months out of the year up in the north every year, you know. Right. I, I I mean, really, that's my plan whenever I retire, you know. <laughs> Central Florida most of the year and then middle of the summer I'm going to come up there. Yeah. Good yeah, plan. Good plan. Yeah. It's, 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 it's good fishing, man. For as much as I complain in the winter of oh now i gotta go ice fishing or i've got a snow or i've got a shovel 10 inches of snow out of my driveway you know when when late april rolls around and oh man my wife and i um we fished out of my boat we have a cabin on a northern michigan lake that will remain unidentified and uh every time we fished it last year we had over 25 pounds of smallmouth with and it's just phenomenal. I know I can't, we've caught last year, seven fish over six pounds and, uh, had one that was just under seven. I just, the fish just look grotesque, you know, they're so big and it's, there's those lakes like that are a dime a dozen though. Cause you know, you have so many lakes, they don't all get fished specifically not by hardcore bass guys. So it's Ontario's the same way. Uh-huh. You're I don't mean to get on a camera. tangent, man. I mean, what other? Do you have any other specific ice no, fishing questions? Or that's that's it. I mean, we we did it. At, you know, no, that's that, that's it. That's all I got. Yeah, it was, you, man, it was super interesting. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, as it, I mean, just kind of as far as ice fishing goes, just the just the kind of closing argument. I just want to reiterate, you know, for anybody south of the Mason Dixon line that that does happen to stumble across this. You know, it's as easy as making a couple phone calls, you know, uh, Lake of the Woods, uh, Devil's Lake over in the Dakotas, uh, Sturgeon Bay, um, Leech Lake, all, all these lakes, you know, have guides on them. And, and these specific guides, you know, they'll take care of you. They'll put you on the ice, give you a potential once in a lifetime experience. Um, specifically, the Sturgeon Bay guys take so good a care of us. They'll stop by at like 11 o'clock, take a few of our fish go back, flay them up, turn them into fish sandwiches for you, bring them back out to you 30 minutes later. So it's like, wow, it's, it's, it's a cool experience. And, and the nice thing is you kind of, you kind of mentioned some of your apprehensions about going out on unsafe ice. Those guys don't operate on anything that they're not comfortable driving on. So, you know, you're being taken care of, you know, all the guides and outfitters I know safety's number one priority. They want everybody to come up, have a good time. So, if there's any bucket listers out there, it's it's really worth it's really worth looking looking into. Lake of the Woods, huh? Yeah, if you type in Lake of the Woods uh, ice fishing guides, you'll you'll probably get a good 10, 12 different lodges up there that that'll take phenomenal care of you. It's the same with same with Lake Simcoe. Yeah, yep. It's just Lake Simcoe over in Canada. You will not find in my opinion, uh, you know, I've not fished any, I've not fished everywhere, but Lake Simcoe is the, the best perch fishing I've ever experienced in my life. And it's just, yep. <laughs> I want to go back white, really bad. White, white fish. Like, yep. Uh, Lakers. Yep. They have, um, uh, herring, a bunch of herring cruising herring around all the time. Right too. Yeah. They have those four species that yep. are big on Lake, on Lake uh, Simcoe. There's so many woods, so many islands and everything there, huh? Oh, it's the yeah. Lake of the woods, yeah. Yeah. Especially when you get up especially when you get up to like the northwest angle, it's you know, there's a several thousand islands on that lake. Yeah, I can share the the screen. Yep. 
So if you scroll more down to, I'm trying to get see where we're at. Yeah, if you scroll more down to, keep going. Yeah, so down here is where most of your guides are going to be. You have, uh, you'll see bought at Minnesota. Uh, it's prob it's over to the right. So this is the Rainy River that comes in. If you scroll down just a little bit more, there's Baudet uh, right below you. If you follow oh, yeah. the river down. Yep. Yeah. So yeah. that's the biggest town up in that area. Um, you know, it's got all your grocer needs and everything. But if you follow the Rainy River to where it meets, you're at Wheeler's Point, And that's where all of, that's where most of the guides are. See all these, um, all oh, the, okay. yep, all those pink markers. Yeah. Those are all different resorts that you can plan the trip with. Um, their ice road goes out right out from there. You get on the ice road and you can go as far as your truck will take you or as far as the shuttle you rent will take you. So it's a uh, big pike, big walleye, sauger, which is like a walleye. Yeah. Uh, if you go up into the, if you go up into the Northwest angle, they got big lake trout, big crappie, but it's, 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 it's just a cool opportunity. Sounds awesome, man. All right. Well, I appreciate, man, I really appreciate y'all's time. I don't want to hold you up too much. I know you're on East Coast time. The, uh, but I want to give you a chance to shout out any sponsors, anybody, anybody makes fishing easier for you, anybody you want to talk about. Rich, how about you? Hobie. Other than Hobie, I, I got no, nothing else. All right. Well, Hobie's well, actually, great. So we do have a new, uh, we have a new, um, um, uh, fishing shop opening up in the area, Lake St. Clair Pro Tackle, mm -hmm. and uh, they are opening on April 1st, so uh, have a look, they'll be uh, have an online presence, and they'll have all the best gear available. Awesome, that's cool. Brandon, how about you, man? Yeah, so, uh, so, you know, I'm a huge, I'm a huge kayak guy, but I'm also, uh, I'm also a big bass boat okay. guy as well, yeah. um, so I, you know, I want to thank Montcalm Marine in uh, Mid Michigan. Probably, I'd probably it's well, it's no question the best uh, Phoenix, um, Phoenix Camus and um, a Vexus dealer in the entire Midwest. And uh, I mean, they take great care of you. They took really good care of me. Uh, they have one of the best uh, electronic riggers I've ever seen. Uh, you buy a boat from Montcalm Marine. If you can envision how you want your electronics or something done, they can get it done. Uh, it's just really, really phenomenal place to, uh, to go to, uh, got a bunch of shows coming up. So follow them on social media. You'll be able to see what shows they're going to here in Michigan, Indiana and Ohio. So it's, it's worth watching, uh, mags, custom rods, uh, from the good old heart of the UP, some of the best bass fishing rods, um, I've ever put my hands on. Mag M-A-G-S? Yep, M-A-G-S, Mag's yeah, Custom never, Rods. Never heard um, of them. Check them it, out. During the, <laughs> during the AFC, or no, it was during the Packers playoff game, uh, they showed a little bit of ice fishing. Um, or no, it was the Detroit, sorry, the Detroit Lions and Packers last regular season game. They showed some ice fishing out on Green Bay, and they were all using Mag's Custom Rods and stuff, so that was kind of kind of neat to see on uh, on Sunday night football, but um, they're phenomenal rods. Uh, when I was down in, down on Caddo Lake and down in Florida, boat flipping five pounders. So people who know me, I don't, they must be the bass boat guy in me. I hardly ever take the net with me. So it's usually a, a crap show when I get a good one on. So it's nice to be able to trust my equipment. And then, uh, last, last, but certainly not least it, or yeah, last but not least, if you're into, um, making your own baits, Angling AI bait, bait molds and dead on plastics. Plastisol is probably the best you're ever going to find. Uh, Angling AI is, is blowing up. They've got some of the best bait molds on the market. Um, got a phenomenal website. Check them out. And uh, dead on plastics, man. If, if you're not pouring your own baits, making your own colors, I would recommend getting into it because the sky's the limit as far as, you know, what colors you want to run on certain baits, how buoyant you want to make certain baits. So, and it's, if you're not into ice fishing, you live up north. It's a good way to pass the time too. So, yeah, for sure. But I want to thank you for having us on, Dan. It's been it's been fun. Yeah, man. That really thank y'all for humoring humoring a southerner and trying to understand what y'all do up there. It it really does sound like a blast. I'd love to do it one day. So, but thank y'all. Like the rest of the year. 
Rich, uh, get, good luck with your tournament, and send me that link whenever you have one. I'll I'll post it up on the deal too. Yeah, right. yeah, it'll be awesome. Have a good one. Yeah, yeah. yeah and uh, just hey. just kind of as a as a parting piece, if if uh, if anybody has any more questions, you know, if I've kind of sparked an interest or anything, feel free to reach out to me. You can find me on socials. Just search my name, and I'll be happy to answer any questions. And if you're ever in the area, and our times coincide, might even be able to get out on the ice with you. So it's it's something cool that I think a lot of people should be able to experience. So I like trying to make that happen for people. Yeah, man. Thank you. And as always, wear your PFDs out there. It's cold. If if you have open water, you know, have a splash bag with you and be careful and they can get ugly out there real quick. All right. We'll see y'all again next week. Later. All right. Take care.